Hey folks, uh, welcome to Brian D's Tech Channel here. I'm going to talk to you about my work on induction heaters. The second attempt video uh, shows this circuit. And this circuit worked great. I mean, what I did um, to update that circuit was I added more capacitors. These are 0.33 microfarad capacitors, or you can use 0.47 microfarad capacitors, and I've connected them series parallel. So if it's 0.33, the total uh, capacitance is 0.99 microfarads. And if it's 0.47 microfarads for each capacitor, then it's three times 0.47 microfarads for the total capacitance. And what I was using with the circuit, which is what everyone else uses pretty much, is um, uh, 5819. Um, this one is a uh, fast, uh, very fast diode. That's a shot key diode. And then I was clamping the voltage at 12 volts with these 1N4742 to prevent over voltage on the gate of these uh, IRFB250s. So the basic layouts are shown here. And uh, that second attempt video shows rapid heating of a fairly large piece of metal using a 4.5 plus 4.5 turns of 12 gauge wire and using a uh, 12, uh, using a uh, 12 turn, actually on that video I used a uh, flyback transformer core, but I changed that now to a 12 turn 2.5 millihenry um, toroid. And uh, it worked great, but the problem I was having is I kept blowing the zenas, and I kept, uh, the zenas failed repeatedly after just a few minutes, and sometimes immediately on connecting the power source. And these ultimately failed, these uh, Sharky diodes, and then the whole system failed. Both uh, uh, MOSFETs, the RFP250s, failed. So I couldn't keep doing that. So I, I've since modified the circuit and got rid of the uh, got rid of the uh, Zener diodes, and instead put a voltage regulator onto the bases of both of the RFP250s. So I'm using LM. 7812 and a couple of, uh, of electrolytics and uh, getting a stable 12 volt output. So that enabled me to get rid of two of the things that failed, i.e. the IN4, the 1N4742s. And then I replaced the Sharky diodes, the 5819s, with these ultra fast diodes, the MUR860, which are rated for fairly high voltage and current. I think it's 10 amps or something like that, and 200 or more volts. And everything else pretty much stays the same. And you can use, you know, the 0.33s as shown here, or 0.47 microfarads, as I mentioned. And I'm going to show you how that Here's works. The setup. I'm using a green toroid here. They seem to work the best. And uh, I'm going to connect this to a uh, regulated power supply at 19 volts in. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, I've put, put a little diode LED in the circuit to show that it's on. And we're going to see if we can heat this uh, screwdriver, so let's go. Okay, I'm going to put that right into the coil. There it goes, it's in the coil. Let's see how that goes. There it goes, it's starting to glow really fast, so very rapid heating of that. Wow, the thing's getting really hot. Feel this coil. I'm going to turn this off before I start touching the coil. You can touch that. It's a little bit hot. Not too bad. Let's feel these uh, MOSFETs. These feel just warm. I think they're heating up more than usual because there's a voltage drop. I think there's like a forward voltage of 1.5 volts on those MUR860s. Here's both MUR 860s, one there and one there, and that uh, contributes to heating. And also, they're not they're not as fast as shock keys. But I am actually planning to use some shock keys, and I want to use um, some good, some actually some really uh, high voltage, high current shock keys. Those are still on order from eBay. I'm going to try a much larger piece of metal now. I'm going to try this 
great big uh, screwdriver here and see what this does. Alright, here it goes. Reconnect this. There it goes. Let's see what that's up to. There it goes, starting to glow. It's definitely within 30 seconds. It's starting to get pretty hot. There you go. Let's touch these uh, MOSFETs. These are warm still. They're not really hot. The coil is hot. I mean, I can touch it. It's not like burning hot. I can actually touch it. So that's the uh, setup. And I'll keep you informed of what happens once I get my uh, high voltage my high voltage Schalke diodes. I think they're around either 150 or 200 volts and 10 amps, so uh, we'll see what those do. But I should get a whole lot less heating and even better responses. Just to end now, we'll try that smaller screwdriver and see what that does. Here it is. There it goes, it's starting to heat up really rapidly. Whoops. Again. Very fast. Alright, well, hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.